of their towns, particularly of Amaro, from Utopia. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jenna Lee. Utopia by St. Thomas More. Of their towns, particularly of Amaro. He that knows one of their towns knows them all. They are so like one another, except where the situation makes some difference. I shall therefore describe one of them, and none is so proper as Amaro, for as none is more eminent, all the rest yielding in precedence to this, because it is the seat of their supreme council, so there was none of them better known to me, I having lived five years altogether in it. It lies upon the side of a hill, or rather a rising ground. Its figure is almost square, for from the one side of it, which shoots up almost to the top of the hill, it runs down, in a descent for two miles to the river Anadur, but it is a little broader the other way that runs along by the bank of that river. The Anadur rises about eighty miles above Amaro in a small spring at first, but other brooks falling into it, of which two are more considerable than the rest, as it runs by Amaro it is grown half a mile broad but it still grows larger and larger, till after sixty miles' course below it it is lost in the ocean. Between the town and the sea, and for some miles above the town, it ebbs and flows every six hours with a strong current. The tide comes up about thirty miles so full that there is nothing but salt water in the river, the fresh water being driven back with its force, and above that for some miles the water is brackish, but a little higher as it runs by the town it is quite fresh, and when the tide ebbs it continues fresh all along to the sea. There is a bridge cast over the river, not of timber, but of fair stone, consisting of many stately arches. It lies at that part of the town which is farthest from the sea, so that the ships, without any hindrance, lie all along the side of the town. There is likewise another river that runs by it, which, though it is not great, yet it runs pleasantly, for it rises out of the same hill on which the town stands, and so runs down through it and falls into the Anadur. The inhabitants have fortified the fountainhead of this river, which springs a little without the towns, that so, if they should happen to be besieged, the enemy might not be able to stop or divert the course of the water, nor poison it, from thence it is carried in earthen pipes to the lower streets. And for those places of the town to which the water of that small river cannot be conveyed, they have great cisterns for receiving the rain-water, which supplies the want of the other. The town is compassed with a high and thick wall, in which there are many towers and forts. There is also a broad and deep dry ditch, set thick with thorns, cast around three sides of the town, and the river is instead of a ditch on the fourth side. The streets are very convenient for all carriage, and are well sheltered from the winds. Their buildings are good, and so uniform that a whole side of a street looks like one house. The streets are twenty feet broad. There lie gardens behind all their houses. These are large, but enclosed with buildings, that on all hands face the streets, so that every house has both a door to the street and a back door to the garden. Their doors all have two leaves, which, as they are easily opened, so they shut of their own accord. And there being no property among them, every man may freely enter into any house whatsoever. At every ten years' end they shift their houses by lots. They cultivate their gardens with great care, so that they have both vines, fruits, herbs, and flowers in them, and all is so well ordered and so finely kept that I never saw gardens anywhere that were both so fruitful and so beautiful as theirs. And this humor of ordering their gardens so well is not only kept up by the pleasure they find in it, but also by an emulation between the inhabitants of the several streets, who vie with each other. And there is, indeed, nothing belonging to the whole town that is both more useful and more pleasant so that he who founded the town seems to have taken care of nothing more than of their gardens, for they say the whole scheme of the town was designed at first by Utopus, but he left all that belonged to the ornament and improvement of it to be added by those that should come after him, that being too much for one man to bring to perfection. Their records that contain the history of their town and state are preserved with an exact care, and run backwards seventeen hundred and sixty years. From these it appears that their houses were at first low and mean, like cottages, made of any sort of timber, and were built with mud walls and thatched with straw. But now their houses are three stories high, the fronts of them are faced either with stone, plastering, or brick, and between the facings of their walls they throw in their rubbish. Their roofs are flat, and on them they lay a sort of plaster, which costs very little, and yet is so tempered that it is not apt to take fire, 
and yet resist the weather more than lead. They have great quantities of glass among them, with which they glaze their windows. They use also in their windows a thin linen cloth that is so oiled or gummed that it both keeps out the wind and gives free admission to the light. End of Of Their Towns, Particularly of Amarillo